What's going on guys? National Master James Canty III here with Chess.com and today we have the top five swindles. Swindles guys, I'm sure you've been there before. Maybe you've swindled a game or two or two in your life, but this is the top five swindles from some of the best in the Speed Chess Championships. In this first game, we have Alexander Grishuk versus Magnus Carlsen. This was back in 2017. Yes, 2017 guys, so let's see what happens. White actually just played queen e3. So Alexander Grishuk just played queen e3 in this weird position, guys. A lot going on. Back rank is covered by black. Maybe even the light squares could be a problem for white here. But also there's like checks and like maybe even some type of mates, like some type of, you know, 97s and queen g5s and mates. There's there's stuff going on. This is a powerful position here. After queen e3, this is what Magnus does. Magnus just plays queen d7. What? Queen d7? It's a very rare blunder at this level, guys. But it's a blunder. Queen d7? What happens after queen d7? What, do you, what would you play here? Fight to move, guys. Queen d7 is a blunder. Here it is. Knight f6. Very simple. Thanks for the queen. I'm sure Alexander Grishik was like, what am I, am I being tricked? I mean, what is this? Knight f6, and here it is. The queen falls, guys. The queen falls, and then he follows up. This is not even the swindle part. It looks like black's just lost, right? Maybe some counterplay, especially with some checks and like things can happen. The rook's on the back rank, so it is pretty scary still. But here we go. He says f4. So I'm just going to move my king to f2 actually after this. But here is the swindling part, guys. Now the best move actually, let's go back here. Queen to d3 is actually the best move is what they call eyeballing. Shout out to Yasser Sirwan is what he would say here. Queen to d3, eyeballing the d7 and the g6 square as well. This is a nasty move here. And then after we have uh, bishop c6. Bishop d5, capture, capture, and then um, white's really playing for two results here. So uh, either winning or drawing. Now, going back here, he actually played f4 in this position. After bishop takes, Grishik chose f4, uh, leading us into rook e8. Now there's all kind of damage that's about to happen to white's position here. So after rook to e8, he's in a lot of trouble here, actually. So he just gives it back. He just says, all right, cool. You know what? Hey, I'll give you your queen back. Let's see what we can do here. But look at this position now, guys. What a swindle. I lost my queen. I got it back. Now can I win this game? Well, let's see. Rook b4, king g7, king f2. a5, we're just going to push to pass pawn. Rook b8 and bishop c6. A lot of moves here, so we're going to fast forward some. Rook b6, uh, rook a3 here, bishop d1. We're going to fast forward some moves here, guys. Pawn takes and rook g1 we're, we're just we're just maneuvering that's that's kind of what they're doing maneuvering trying to probe make make some weaknesses here i also put some threats on the board here as much as we can so king d4 steps off of it you take mine i take yours bishop b7 you take mine i take yours and now guys whoa what happened here i'm up two pawns in an end game what i was down a queen though or down the exchange for the queen now i'm actually in the position to win this game says magnus now after rook here we're going to sack our rook on this all day and every day in any way so let's see what happens we push some pawns here pawns get pushed king walks up a little bit we capture i queen you queen but with check now he moves out of the way and then the, the rest honestly is technique from here these are hard end games but especially with this past pawn here black has a huge chance of winning this game so after a few checks or a lot of checks actually a lot of checking being done king moves around does what he has to do then we go back to the back rank and go here and then he resigns that was it he resigned like right here he just resigned right here because there's no way to stop queen g6 check also queen e7 check if you check me anywhere i'm going to go queen e7 and this is queening easily i mean this is elementary uh in game from here guys what a swindle actually looking back at that guys looking back at that right here just going back to it we lost our queen this is why you don't give up we lost our queen magnus says yeah i lost it did he resign no he kept playing he kept playing on f4 rookie eight wow i get my queen back because there's mating threats and all kind of nasty things happening after check here i mean even if you move your queen like queen c5 to stop the check that's checkmate or almost it actually had to block with the queen on f2 but then bishop c6 oh my goodness let's just oh my goodness there's just too many things going on there so he just he just said forget it let's just take it and then we go into a winning end game what a swindle guys this will swindle number one now let's move on to swindle number two and here we are with swindle number two this is Jorg Meyer with the white pieces versus Sergei Karyakin 
with the black pieces in 2017. So let's see what happened here, guys. In this position, actually, Queen F7 was the last move played by Sergey. Now, Sergey is under some pressure here, guys. This rook's kind of weird looking. This pawn's hanging. We got a pass pawn here. I mean, there's a lot going on. Even the bishop is aiming on this side of the board, but we do have some compensation with the pass pawn in the center, but not realistically because it can always be stopped here. So it's kind of just like dynamic, to say the least here. Now, here's what happens. Immediately, Jorg Meyer just plays Rook takes b6, and we're like, hey, we're just going to take the pawn. Pretty simple here. There should be nothing, but there actually is something here. Black to move, guys. What do you actually do here in this position? Here we go. Sergey actually just played rook to d1 check. Rook d1 check. If you take my rook, I'm going to take your queen. So this is automatic. King f2 is forced, and then knight to d3. Wow. Now we're in a driver's seat. Now we're picking up some material after you just snapped this pawn here, thinking you were winning. Well, think again. King to g3. Knight takes c1. Queen to c6, just stepping out of the way, actually also hitting his rook as well. So we move our rook to f8. Just bring everything to this side of the board where your king is. Now after, bishop takes c1, queen takes f5, a5, and then e4. And now this is very scary. I mean, there's a check here. Pawn takes is coming. Queen g6 check looks, looks pretty nice too. You have a lot of moves here. And you're also threatening to take this just in case. a6 was played, and then e takes f3. And Sergei Karyakin actually... Won this game right here. Right here, he won the game. York Meyer just resigned. And honestly, it, it is um it's, it's just over here. But there's a lot of things that you can do from this position. Queen G6 is especially after Queen takes F3. And if pawn takes, we may even have rook G1 check in some cases. Maybe Queen G6 first and then Queen to G. Oh my goodness. It's just there's so much going on, guys. There's so much going on. But the swindle happened back here after. Queen f7, queen c4, queen f7, we had to block, and it, white's giving some pressure to black here. I mean, if you look at this position, uh, even now, if queen f7 wasn't the move, well, you kind of need, need, need that to happen. But it's not the easiest position to play here as black. Yeah, you are hitting this pawn, but this is hanging, this is hanging. The rooks are coordinated nicely. The bishop's looking good. The rook's kind of misplaced, to be honest. It looks kind of weird here on the d5 square. So queen f7, we defend it. And then, man, there's our chance. We take it. Every time we see our chance, rook d1, king f2, knight d3, and the rest is history. Nice swindle here by Sergei Karyakin to go on and win this game. And now we're going to move on to swindle number three. Now with swindle number three, this one is so awesome, guys. This is actually one that you may even see in your own games and a concept that you should definitely remember. This game is actually Anishkiri versus Wesley So with the black pieces back in 2017. Let's actually see what's going on here. Black is about to queen. Wesley So is trying to queen one of these pawns as quickly as possible. Especially this one's going to queen because this one can't yet because of this. And you can't actually push this pawn because the, 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 this, is, this is here. It just doesn't seem right here. You also have like maybe checks and takes. And you're able to hold as black here while you're also able to try to queen this pawn at the same time. But here's what Anishkiri did Anish Giri looked around the board and understood all of his resources and he plays rook to g3 now the game should be drawn but he actually sets a very clever trap here what do you think he's doing well Wesley so says b3 I don't know what you're doing I have I don't understand I don't understand and after b3 guys what do you actually do now here's what is what was supposed to happen is actually bishop to b5 and after rook takes then bishop to c4 because this pawn is not really promoting and the king has to step off we can also step up and we have a pawn of our own so there's too many things this should be drawn but actually that was not the move wesley so actually chose b3 trying to queen in this position what do you do now anish giri what do you do now white to move here it is guys here it is swindle f7 f7 i don't care what you do you're gonna lose this game now there is checkmate on the back rank and if we try check well we take it and then we come and grab this pawn with our king and this one with our rook and then it's king rook versus king very simple easy win there guys what a swindle i mean it's so like such a deadly move but so quiet at the same time rook to g3 nothing so he plays b3 wesley so's like ah i'm gonna queen and then f7 and he's like i'm not gonna queen anything and the game is over on the spot what a swindle congratulations to anishkiri for that one that was really nice guys now let's move on to swindle number four now for swindle number four we have yanni pomniachi versus levon Luronian 
in 2017, guys. Let's check this out. This is a Roy Lopez Morphe defense, Cozio defense, actually. And here's what happens. So La Levant Aronian, actually, first off, his king's in the center. So let's see what happens here. This is a wild game, guys. And watch the sequence of moves that's about to happen. Knight takes d4. First off, of course, we can't take. Just because, uh, you know, obvious reasons, our queen is just hanging. So he plays bishop b4, not only hitting the rook, but also defending f3 as well. Okay, rook moves out of the way, and here we go, guys. Are you ready for this? Knight takes d4! I don't even care that you take him my queen. I don't care, says Jan Nipomniachi. Now, the queen sack is unsound in a way, but of course, even at the high level here, you have to be extremely accurate, and it is definitely scary. So now let's see what happens. What's his intention? Do we just take back on d1? Actually, no. In between moves, just in zone. Knight to c6. Beautiful move here. Actually hitting the queen and the knight at the same time. Your opponent will be so unexpected when he sees this on the board. Now, bishop takes c3 was the wrong move actually here. Wrong move. Bishop takes c3. Uh, and actually, knight takes c6 was the best way to play, believe it or not. And after bishop takes king f8, rook takes and queen f6, bishop to d7, rook d8, bishop takes c7. Rook takes, rook takes, and then king g8. Now, this is the refutation um, of it, but of course, there's still some complex to it and uh, some com complexity to it. But black is objectively just better um, here. But it is, it's going to be a fight. It is going to be a fight, but this is the way that he should have proceeded here. But actually, he took on c3, and after bishop takes, pawn takes. So now we actually have the bishop pair on top of the queen sack. So after knight takes c1, c6, bishop takes, king f8, rook takes and then queen to f6 now let's see what happens here guys let's look at the position we got two rooks actually kind of one because this one's not doing anything the king is unsafe we got bishop swiping the board and two rooks i mean this is definitely some compensation here so bishop to d7 threatening the rook after rook d8 ouch and there we are with the skewer and that is the problem with the bishop takes c3 move because with it without bishop takes c3 the skewer wouldn't be allowed and now we would be able to keep some material on the board now this is enough to win here after bishop takes h8 f6 and then h4 c5 and then rook to d5 guys king to g8 bishop check and then bishop back to d7 now here watch this best move here bishop c6 beautiful move beautiful move because now i'm going to take and then check on the back rank if you, of course, defend your rook. Now, if he takes the bishop, which he does, then we take and h5, cut the king off. Make sure he's stuck in here. There's a mate threat on the board. King f7, he comes around the back way here. Check. Double the rooks because we have to. Queen here to d5. Rook d7. Game's over. Swindle. Swindle. Swindle, guys. What a swindle, okay? Man, he was not, hey, this queen sack is not supposed to work. And he's done it before, too. This is not the first time he's ever done this queen sack. Not that it's not supposed to work, but it's hard finding the refutation to it because we're not computers. So now, after this, bishop takes d1, knight c6. Beautiful, beautiful play here. Bishop d7, bishop b5. Now we take the other rook. And then we need to cut some things off. Okay, bring the check in. Bring the bishop back around. Bishop to c6 here. And the game is over very soon. Yanni Pamniachi was a monster for this swindle here. And after rook here, the game's over because we have a checkmate here and a checkmate here. And if you tank, of course, obvious reasons, you just lose. It's rook versus everything else. And bringing a queen to g8 is checkmate. Bringing a queen here, it's, it, it just doesn't work. Everything's losing. So, of course, uh, Yanni Pamniachi wins in this position right here, guys. That was swindle number four. And now let's move on to the final swindle of today. And here we go, guys. The last swindle of today. Here we are, guys. This is Magnus Carlsen versus Wesley So with the black pieces back in 2017. Let's actually see what happened here. This started as a ready, ended up in some kind of King's Indian attack. And B5 was just played by Wesley So. So Magnus says, okay, we're going to capture. Then we capture back. And then we take on A8. And then take on a8 honestly guys looks objectively drawn there is some play there is some play from both sides here especially a uh, queen side play here this pawn's very weak and also white just has kind of some dynamicism in the center maybe we can break this down play some c4 and just kind of see what happens here white's not hoping for a lot here but we are we still have to play on so after knight to e3 rook to d8 and then after knight takes d5 the game is just drawn after e takes d5 and uh, of course, you have to still play on. You got to be accurate. You still have to, you know, work for this draw. But it's not that easy, actually. E takes d5 should be the best move. But here's what Wesley show, so chose. He, he does. Rook takes d5. Rook takes d5. Seems like a simple move, right? 
Seems like everything's fine. Or is it, guys? Or is it? What would you play in this position? If you were Magnus here, what would you play with white? Here it is, guys. Here it is. Queen takes d5. Whoa. Magnus Carlsen wins by resignation, although the game should have been drawn after e takes d5. Because now after pawn takes, rook check, bishop f8, and bishop to h6. Very nice way to finish off a win here. Now, of course, this is a winning endgame, and he did go on to win this game, actually. But it was a draw, and actually, uh, it was a draw. And Wesley so just resigned. Queen takes d5. He was like, ah, oh, my goodness. The game should be a draw. You know, actually, after uh, e takes d5, rook e8, bishop f8, bishop h6. And uh, he, won, he won his game from the resignation, to be honest. But uh, queen takes d5, e takes d5, it's just a draw. But the queen's sacrifice was so stunning that he just resigned before he got here. That's what happens sometimes. Sometimes you ever seen that move? Have you ever played that move on the board? Or you've seen it happen? And they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I missed that. And it's actually a draw. I've been there many times. I'm sure you probably have before, especially after analyzing your game. Perfect example here from two monsters, actually. Queen takes d5 should be just a draw. Because, of course, e takes, you know, rook check. Now, of course, you can. Uh, there is some, some play here. You have some things to do. Takes, takes. And this should be a draw. But, of course, you know, you, the king is a little bit closer. We could also maybe try to work some things in. But objectively, just kind of draw on three versus three, right? Three versus three. This was the top five swindles of the Speed Chess Championship, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And I'm National Master James Canty III, and I'll see you guys on the next video.